Well, hey, good morning, Celebration Center. I'm excited to be with you guys this morning. We're doing something brand new, something we've never done. We're trying out our very first video message time. And, you know, we're probably going to have a few bugs. Just bear with it. We'll work it out. We'll get through this. But, you know, I, I have to admit, I have never been through anything like this as a pastor um, in, in leadership or, or anything else where it, it feels like we're in uncharted waters. You, you know that feeling? I, I know that you guys are feeling quite a bit of uncertainty as well, maybe with, hey, what when are the, the, the viral tests going to be available? What am I going to do with work or school? Or what happens if somebody in my family gets sick? We're all dealing with things that that make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. But, you know, what I want to talk about this morning wasn't originally planned for today. Today I, I was going to be talking about something entirely different. But as, as earlier this week things began to unfold, it really became clear to me that I needed to a, adjust what I was doing, that I needed to speak into the moment. And so for this moment, what I want to talk about is one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 23. It's, it's really good. It's very short, um, but it has a lot to say about our trust in God and who God is for us. Now, for those of you who maybe aren't as familiar with the Bible, uh, the, the book of Psalms is basically a book of poetry. All right. It, it's, it's full of poems. Some of them, many of them actually were meant to be sung. But if you were to open up a Bible uh, right to the middle, you would end up somewhere in uh, the Psalms. And as I said, many of these poems were intended to be sung for different occasions. Uh, a little bit kind of like when uh, my wife and I are getting our kids ready for bed, or it's time to get them get their teeth brushed, or something else. We'll, we'll just randomly start singing them songs, and just to kind of help them get into it and, and everything. But it, it, it helps them, because it gives them a message. It tells them what it is that we think about them, how much we love them. And the, the book of Psalms is a little bit like that, in that there's songs from us to God. Sometimes these, these songs are about celebrating God and his goodness. It's just praise to God. Some of them are invitations actually to other people. Hey, come join us. Come live like us. Come be wise. Come love God with all you are and all you have. Some of the Psalms are, are really prayerful complaints to God. God, what are you doing? Why is the world working out the way that it's working out right now? I don't understand. Many of us, whether we're aware of it or not, have probably heard at least part of the 23rd Psalm. It's often quoted in times of distress and fear. And I want to read it to you. Like I said, it's only six verses long. It won't take that much time. But here it is. It's a Psalm of David. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, I want to go back through this, and I'm going to read it again. But as I read it, what I want to do is I want to break down some of the, the key things in this psalm. We're not going to be exhaustive in it. There's a lot that we could cover, but I, there are some really important things that I, I really want to draw out for us this morning. So here we go. Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd David speaks of here was someone who intimately cared for the sheep. The shepherd not only guided the sheep, but also helped pregnant sheep give birth. Help them through that process. The, the shepherd would carry weary sheep. The shepherd would take care of their wounds. They would, what the Bible calls, we, we see throughout the Old Testament about binding up wounds, bandaging 
uh, setting bones, all of that kind of thing. They did everything they could for the sheep so that that, that sheep could have a fighting chance. So that's what David's talking about when he says, the Lord is my shepherd. He is my caretaker. He is the one who intimately, desperately loves me and is, and is with me and taking care of me. And he goes on, I lack nothing. Because the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing that I lack, he says. Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. In other words, he knows where the good green grass is. At, at the time that David wrote this psalm, shepherds often took their sheep on, on journeys, and they would go from one place to another. Many times they were going through rocky, arid places, and so the shepherd had to know the right places to go, to stop, so that the sheep would get the kind of meal and, and grass and, and nutrients that they needed. So he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He, he knows where to go, and he takes me there. He leads me beside quiet waters. The quiet waters were important because sheep could uh, oftentimes get swept away in, in a rapid river. And so the shepherd had to make sure that he was bringing the, the, the sheep to a place where they wouldn't get swept away. Verse 3, he refreshes my soul. In other words, he makes life bearable for the sheep so they're not overly stressed or burdened. You ever you feel stressed and burdened? God refreshes our soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. In other words, David says there he does all of this because of who he is. It's based in who he is. This is his very nature to take care of us. Verse 4, even though I walk through the darkest valley. I want you to notice here, because this is important, especially right now. David here does not say, even if I walk through the darkest valley. He says, even though I walk through the darkest valley. We are going to face days and times of trial and darkness. It's going to happen. We're facing those right now. But look at this. Look what else we're told. I will fear no evil. Even though I, I experience all of that, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. He says, your presence, the fact that you are right here in front of me, that you are with me, that you are guiding me, that you are caring for me, that you're getting me to where I need to go. That's why I will not fear. He goes on and he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, the rod and the staff, they were tools the shepherd used. They were tools to keep the sheep in line. Sometimes the sheep could get out of line and they needed to be brought back into line. But also, these tools were to ward off wild animals, wolves and bears and lions. The, the point here is that the shepherd is on the watch. He's paying attention to the sheep, but he's also paying attention to the surroundings. He's intimately aware of and taking care of the sheep, even through the danger. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows David says here, no matter where I'm at or what's going on, you are there. You are providing for and taking care of me. I have everything I need. This is going back to that. I, I lack nothing. I have all that I need. As a matter of fact, you, you give me something to eat, to feast on right in the middle of all of the danger. As, as my enemies are watching, you're taking care of me. Verse 6, surely your goodness is... And love. Now, these two descriptors, goodness and love, we could talk about what they are and everything, but what I want you to hear in this particular moment is that David is, is he's describing God. He's using these two descriptors to say, you will follow me. And the word he uses for follow, it's, it's an interesting one because usually in, in the Old Testament, it's used of enemies who would be chasing down uh, the Israelites or, or somebody else, they, they were just relentless. They were out for bad and harm. But on the converse here, David uses this, this word as, as a stark realization that God is so for us, that he loves us so, so much that he is relentless in his chase of us. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, I'm going to be in the very presence of God. I'm going to live with you. This psalm is so important for our situation right now. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what fear you might be experiencing, this psalm encourages us to do one thing, to find our hope and our peace in God and nothing else. And that's the main thing I want us to hear this morning. As uncharted as this situation is for all of us, our hope is not in a president doing what he needs to do, though seriously, he needs to do what he should do. We, he should be expected to do what he's taking care of, but our hope isn't in the fact that he does or he doesn't. Our hope isn't in social distancing, though it is important for us right now to be socially distant so that we don't take uh, the, the risk of spreading this horrific disease to people who maybe won't recover from it. But our hope ultimately isn't in that. Our hope isn't even in some vaccine that will finally put an end to the coronavirus. It'll be good when they finally figure something out, but our hope is not in that. Our hope is in a person. And that person is the one who loves and cares for us in a way that often, frankly, we overlook and forget about because we're so used to being in control of our situation. Well, guess what? Right now, we're not in control. We don't have a say in what happens right now. Our hope must be in the God who is our loving, tender shepherd, the one who takes care of what we need and provides for us in the hard and in the difficult times. You know, um, in October of 2018, it became clear God really spoke to my wife and I that it was time for us to follow him into a different level of ministry. I had a, I had a job. I was working at another church. I was uh, doing some good things. But God told us, you know what? It's time for you to follow me and, and to go where I show you to go. And so for nine months, we prayed and we sought God. For nine months, we waited for an answer. Eventually, I ended up having to go drive Uber for a little while. I don't regret that. I, I had a good time doing that. I, I got to connect with some people. I got to learn about people, but it, it wasn't doing the ministry that I, that I really wanted to do. But I did it to help support my family while we waited for God to make something happen. Finally, after applying here at Celebration Center and interviewing with the selection committee, we knew, my wife and I, Jess, we knew that Celebration Center was the place we wanted to end up. We were excited. We were ready to come. We were ready to be here. But there was still more waiting that had to happen. So finally, we got the word. We came over in this past September, almost 11 months from when God told us to get ready, to get out of the boat and to follow him. We, we were confirmed here at Celebration Center, we, and we're excited. We love it here. We want to continue to be here. Now, you guys, that experience does not compare to what we're experiencing right now. It really doesn't. But what that experience taught me is that God is my shepherd. He is my hope. Not a circumstance. My, my hope isn't in a circumstance, in, in a timeline. It's not in a particular outcome. God is my hope only hope. What about you? What is it for you right now that you are hoping in? Because to live right now in this time with God as our hope, there's really a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, we need to drop our expectation that things will turn out the way we want them to. We've got to drop that expectation because none of us can guarantee our next breath. None of us can guarantee what is going to happen in life. We just don't know. We got to drop that expectation. You know, from time to time, my son will come to me and say, hey, dad, mom told me that I get to do thus and such, whatever it is. Maybe it's watching TV. Maybe it's, you know, getting into something, having a particular snack, something like that. And, you know, my, my son doesn't, he, he's not a liar. Hear, hear me when I say that. He's not a liar, but sometimes my son hears what he wants to hear. I don't know if the rest of you with kids experience that at all, but 
So I'll go and I'll talk to my wife and I'll find out, no, that's not exactly what I said. But what what Caleb has done is is he's gone and he's asked one of us something and, and he's he's heard part of what we've said and he's poured his expectation and his meaning into what we actually said. To get the outcome and the and and what of what he desires. And we sometimes do the same thing with God, don't we? We sometimes fill what he says with our own meaning, with that outcome, with our desire that we want. But to live right now with God as our hope, we need to drop our expectations and instead ask God what he wants us to hear. And I realize that may be difficult right now in uncertainty. We don't, we don't want to have to wait on, on God in, in terms of figuring out what it is he wants from us or for us or, or anything like that. We just want God to hear us. We want him to hear our cries and to get us out of whatever situation we're in. But we need to stop. We need to drop our expectations right now and we need to hear what God has to say to us. And then the second thing is that we need to listen and we need to obey. Sometimes my kids will be distracted by a toy or the television as I'm giving them some instruction. Um, I never do that. I never get distracted. Yes, I do. Uh, but what typically happens is that they either only partially hear what I have to say or they miss it all together. Now, if we're going to live with God as our hope, we need to cut out the distractions around us, those things that take our attention away from him so that we can listen to him, so we can hear him clearly and follow through with what he says. When we do these things, we will be living with God as our hope. When we do these things, we will be experiencing God as our shepherd. And I know there are a lot of different voices right now. Some of them are overreacting to what's going on, while others of them are just way underreacting. Hey, it's no big deal. We're not going to get hurt. Nothing's really all that wrong. Um, understanding all of that, I want to ask you this. What distractions do you need to shut off so you can properly hear God and follow him right now? Because here's what God wants from us right now. First of all, for those of us in Celebration Center. He wants us to stay connected to each other. Just because we're not in the same room right now together doesn't mean we can't be connected. Call each other. Pray with and for each other. Ask each other how we're doing. See if there's something that we can do. Maybe maybe we can't be together as a large group, but maybe there's something that one of us needs that, that somebody else can supply and, and take care of. Stay connected to each other. Second thing though is be Jesus to the world right now that is freaking out. Engage our family and our friends and our neighbors with the hope of Jesus. Not the hope of some outcome. Not the hope of some, hey, maybe this thing will get uh, resolved sooner than we really wanted to. Not some pie in the sky thing, but offer them the hope and the peace you have because of the love Jesus has given you. Give that away. You guys, God is our shepherd. That's who he is. Jesus said this in John chapter 10 verses 14 and 15. He said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus takes this mantle on himself. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay my life I lay, my, I lay down my life for the sheep. You guys, we have a good shepherd. He is with us and he is for us. And we can listen to him because in the, in the end, he is going to make all things right. That is a fact. That is going to happen no matter what happens right now. No matter what we're facing. No matter what issues. No matter what fears. No matter what uncertainty we're encountering. Jesus is good, and he's going to make all things right. The Lord is our shepherd. We lack nothing. Let me pray for us, all right? Jesus, I want to thank you for this church. I want to thank you for 
the people of Celebration Center, these people who love you, who love each other. God, we are dealing with a lot of uncertainty right now. So I ask for peace for everybody right now who's who's feeling fear, who's being who's feeling anxious. Bring your peace. Bring your presence so that we can easily hear your voice in the middle of everything. God, ultimately, we don't want to move forward. We don't want to do anything unless you go with us, unless you lead the way. So give us your peace and your presence, God. And help us to be your hands and your feet, to be an extension of who you are in the world around us right now, to offer hope and, and, and peace to our family, our friends, and our co-workers if we're still going to work at this point. But, but God, help us to carry this out. This is the mission you have given us. And, and we know it's not over just because of, of this crisis right now. It's needed all the more. Help us to focus on you as our good shepherd so that we can reflect you well in and to the world. God, we ask for your provision. We ask that you would protect and guide our healthcare people. We ask that you would guide our president, that you would guide our governor, that you would guide all of the, the, the leaders that we have to listen to right now, the, the decision makers. Give them wisdom in dealing with this crisis and, and help us to be reasonable in our, uh, our following of, of what they, they say. And bring us through this crisis, we ask God. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, listen, I want you guys to uh, keep an eye out on our Facebook page for opportunities to connect and serve. We're going to try to communicate quite a bit through there, through email as well. Um and, and we're going to be doing some things on the website as well. I don't know exactly what that looks like yet, but we're going we're gonna to be working on some things. So keep an eye on those three things, your email, your Facebook, and, and our website. Um, listen, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm still going to be coming into the office and, and working from time to time, um, uh, working on messages uh, and, and doing things for our community, with our community in mind. So I'm still available. I want you to, to get a hold of me. Email me. If you want my my phone number, I'm happy to get that to you. I'm not going to put it here on YouTube, but I, but you can message me and I'll get my, my phone number to you. Um, if you have any questions or concerns or you just want to pray, I'm, I'm here for you, okay? Next week, we are going to go into the, the message series that I had originally planned and you're going to get a treat Marshall is going to be uh, bringing the word uh, this next week. Uh, he's going to start out. We're going to be looking at questions of Jesus. Questions that Jesus asks in the New Testament are all about teaching us something. He wants us to learn something when he asks us questions. So I encourage you, tune back in. I can say that because we're going to be on uh, the video again. And, uh, and hear what it is that, that Marshall brings for us. Uh, and you guys... Pray. Pray for each other. Pray for me. Pray for the board. Pray for our, our country and, and the world. And trust. Trust and follow God. Listen to what he has to say. Because I think he's going to do some amazing things. As difficult as this is, he's going to do some amazing things in us and through us. I love you guys. Thanks for being with us. We will talk to you again uh, soon.